ideas of something where we are in support of, of something else that may fill that role with a much smaller budget. But um, I would not want anything bigger than what we used to have for the 4th of July, uh, at least as far as the city's role. And I'd rather have it be something like $10,000 um, as the kind of thing that we would spend on something like that. Um, then there's the whole contingency fund that is, I think is in play. And a final big chunk of money that's kind of an unknown um, that we've had some conversations about is if we are seriously considering moving to even year elections and in 2011 only, we would be uh, pretty sharply reducing election expense which I see in the budget is about $70,000, and I'm certain that that would not all go away. Um, and uh, there are probably things like machine repairs and stuff like that, and, and, and some expenditures that happen no matter what. Um, but uh, so th those are a couple of things, and some of them uh, I don't see that we could tonight come to a final decision or resolution. And so um, some of what I would want as far as the quote unquote contingency fund would be funds that would go into those things if we decided to do them after all. So, um, and so that just because if, if those are in, and I don't know if they're in play with in the minds of, of other folks on the council, um, but uh, uh, I would have those things as, as areas where I would either see more money going into the fund balance or if necessary we would draw that money and not be setting as much money aside in the fund balance as we would otherwise. And that's my list. Kathy? Um, not to be a party pooper, but if you look at the things that are listed under the conti possible contingency uses, um, I don't think it's a matter of us deciding what would be more important than the other. It's a matter of, you talk about the unknown. We t John talked about the unknown and the um, medical insurance thing for up to a certain point. Well, talk about unknowns, there they all are. One thing that is a known actually on that list though is um, number 11. And um, this is a case of <laughs> my listening to my own words about when you come here, you take the history that comes with the chair. And the MCC has been, over the years, been the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil monkeys up here when it came to let's just grab it and say, what does it take to operate it? And we need a place in the budget for that. So we are having that discussion. But the point of the matter is, looking backwards, it was a mistake not, uh, not to do that a long time ago. I will reiterate, way back when this came about, I was not, okay? I was not a community center person, okay? I, I voted no. Does that make anybody feel better? But you know what? It's in my community. It's part of my community. We own it. It's an asset. I say, I was mistaken. But the flip side of that is we own it. It needs maintenance. It needs constant supervision of the facility. People use it. And it's also an image of the city when people come to it. And we can pretend that we don't have the money to do anything over there, but, you know, are you waiting for something to blow up or fall in? You can take a choice. And then what do we do? If we have nothing in a contingency and we have done nothing more than we've already done, plus there's an operating deficit, what do you propose we do? You know, you want to, I don't know, you want to hire an arson squad? Come on. It's there. People use it. It's a building. If you live in a building, you know what happens to a building. And we, collective, not we necessarily, us, the five of us, or the preceding five, or the five before that, don't remember all the people anymore. The point is, it has been left out of the realistic picture. So that rock has dropped in our laps. And we can go one more time, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, but it's there. So one of the big reasons that the contingency fund, in my estimation, actually I have to agree with Marv, if we could, we could make it, you know, I would make it higher, but I don't think that's possible. But it only takes one of those rocks to drop. 
And then what are we going to do? We're going to sit up here and go, oh, no, no, what are we? I mean, we'll have to, but do you really want to go there? Do you want to have to cut something very essential to be able to fix over there what has needed fixing for five, six, eight years and have nothing in the bank, so to speak, to start it out with? Makes me really nervous. And you don't have to be a pro community center person or a con community center person to see this as practicality. You know, if the roof is leaking here in six places, we'd fix it because this is the center of where we operate. Okay, that's a piece of us over there. People from a lot of other communities come there. It doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal, but it does have to be standing and intact or else it becomes a liability it will no longer be an asset. So I'm just saying caution at some point. Yes, you can, we can put, start putting away money, as we've said, because there are going to be some major projects over there. But it's there. And there are things that are, relatively speaking, in the construction world, old. And we need to be able to do something if we have to without every time pulling <coughs> it for somebody else. It's part of our responsibility. So that's part of my reason for thing and contingency fund is very important to say nothing of the wheels fall off at two squad cars John I'd like to ask staff for some clarification on the, the community center and its place in the budget um, I guess I, I was sort of assuming that that the uh, operating deficit was the unplanned things that might happen as far as that that page um, because we do have the How much do we put in it? well we have that hundred twenty thousand dollars on the first page of the same packet right. from Chuck that I know. was our increase to the levy for covering the community center so um, yeah I'd just like some clarification from staff on what the whole budget picture there is Mayor Council, to understand the, the um, community center operating budget just looking at round numbers, um, in 2009, it operated at about a $300,000 in the red, for, for lack of better terms. Um, we made some adjustments this year and delayed about 150000 of that operating expense, um, mostly out of the maintenance, though. Um, delayed projects, delayed maintenance. And I think uh, in the FYI, uh, Mr. Kaneko put a nice report together on, on some of the impacts of those those types of things. In addition, I think Ms. Guilfoyle and, and Mr. Kaneko worked together in trying to reduce some additional management expenses. And and I know some of you on the council have also got involved in some of those, uh, you know, closing the daycare, those types of things that, that really get to hitting to home on how we operate the building. But as we talked about, when we start talking about those expenses, okay, we've delayed 150 of the 300 We've cut another 60, just in the rough numbers. That's still another $90,000 that we were going to report to you. It's going to operate in the red. Even though you you put money back into it, that's next year's money. That 140,000 was only delayed. So that means they're all on the books for next year. And so the operating expense is in the red. That's when we came to you, I believe, in, in the first meeting of, of November and said, <laughs> This is really a, a three-year plan um, that deficits there. By the $90,000 on that list, um, we're really talking about moving up the three-year plan, and, and that's what it is. I, I put it there. It's one of the things the auditor has always set us, sent us notes. You've seen that. You've seen it before. You know, you shouldn't be operating your, your community center in the red. Well, we do. That's how it shows up on the books. So that's 90000 would get it in into the break even with the increased money we've put in this year and the major expenses that Mr. Kaneko has cut. Mr. Mayor, may I also insert myself into your discussion as well on, an, on one Oh, item? sure. Yeah, we got all night. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. I, I do need to, to talk about uh, the $2 amounts that uh, were noted. Uh, the nest and the EDA money that's come in as I mentioned before in, in estimating revenues uh, those those amounts came in this year we have the money 
Um, we have a negative uh, account. Uh, the redevelopment fund is where the uh, EDA money should have gone. And so certainly it's available, but that means your redevelopment fund will be in the red through 2011. In addition, um, I talked about the $400,000 revenue back and forth where I've got the rosy glasses and Gail's a little more realistic. And that's really what we're talking about in 2010. The $40,000 from Nest goes into the fund balance. That's, that's a positive. We have positive things. We also have the negatives and that the interest is going to show zero. I mean, we're not getting any interest or with monies out and monies paid out on, on refunds. I mean, we don't have that. So we got the positives and the negatives. When those dollars come in, you know, our fund balance going forward, just because we got that money, we're not going to change the estimate of what we're going to start the year with in the fund balance. So if you reduce the levy by the 40 and plus the 45, that's only reducing on the revenue side you will have to reduce expenditures by the same 85,000. So it's not new money, it's not one-time money. It's 2010 revenue going into the fund. Now certainly we can make some other accounting shifts, but it just shows red ink somewhere else. Mr. Mayor. Yes, John. So um, my response on that would be if we reduced what we are budgeting as the contingency fund, we would know that that money went into the fund balance this year from those refunds. Uh, and so that would be that would be the, the budgeting shift that could be done would be to re reduce what we are calling the contingency fund, which I'm saying should just go into the fund balance anyway. I think that it's exceptionally odd that we have a contingency that was specifically described to us as money that we needed to continue to set aside because we didn't know how our bargaining was going to go. And now we've come up with a list of uh, 12 things that that could all be spent on. And I would guess that if we gave it just five minutes, we could make this a list of 50 to 100 things that that could be spent on. I made a comment to Mr. Antonin somewhere along the way that I could easily dream up millions of dollars of things we could spend money on. And so it's like trying to hit a moving target. Uh, and it just seems to me that as we've gone through this and we've done a lot of good things. Mr. Lucan came to us and uh, instead of spending $40,000 for uh, somebody who to head up the ambulance service uh, we're spending 10 but somehow that doesn't create any money um, we uh, have contingencies that we no longer have the doubts of what it was uh, going to be used for so now we've come up with new things it could be used for um, I would say Jim it's a pretty lousy insurance plan um, because you know as unfortunately as Mr. Zick was managed to be smart enough to figure out the list here is like $2 million worth of stuff and we have $122,000 to cover it with. And so um, this does not get to be a discussion about um, what it does get to be a discussion about is whether or not um, we're willing to essentially see that in the coffers in different places there are monies that yep we you know we're planning on spending that but almost every year we don't and and so you know whether we want to do something for the citizens and try to keep their property taxes as low as we actually can and so we could debate a list like this all night long but the real discussion is whether or not we want to cut uh, the levy further than what it currently is, below 5%. And so as we've gone forward, you know, we've had different takes on different things. Um, people, uh, you know, Marv wants to take all the money and put it into the contingency, which of course, you know, as I've just said, we, <laughs> it's, it's, the contingency was for uh, things that were unknown. And those things are not, are now known. And so 
it's a, to me the contingency is a fallacy. We're just making up things to use money for instead of taking the